Hello and welcome back to The Note. Eurozone equities sold off a bit today, that's thanks to the latest twists in the Greek situation, but there's plainly something moving there. The FTSE Euro First 300 is up more than 20% since October, and even American investors are beginning to get excited. Now, what exactly is the bull case for European equities? I asked Jonathan Stubbs, who's the chief European equity strategist for City, uh, and perhaps not surprisingly, the main case comes down to two letters, QE. Well, first of all, you know, welcome to Planet QE from, from Europe. You know, we, mm. It's been a long time coming, but you know, finally it's arrived. There's been a lot of resistance, resi resistance along the way, but we are now in an environment where QE is here for now and could be here for an extended period of time. So it's quite likely there's an additional QE program at some point in time. Um, when we look at previous QE programs in other markets, we learn one thing in particular, and that is that investors should have exposure to, to risk assets, mm. in particular to equities, where you know, your, your average equity return during the seven previous QE programs in the US, UK, and Japan has been around 30%. So you know, the main message here is do not be short risk assets and look to get exposure to equities in particular in markets where you have QE. But isn't this all really about foreign exchange and the weak euro? If you look at it in common currency terms, the FTSE Euro First is still lagging the S&P. You often get this, we call it FX illusion. You know, what, what you make in local terms, you give up on, on the currency. So uh, you know, we, we, we would advise, and you know, in, our, in our research, we suggest that international investors, dollar investors, for example, they, they do hedge the currency when they look to you know, take exposure to Europe and Japan. You know, Europe, ex UK and Japan are the two QE markets right now. But then surely there's also the issue of risk. Voters in the periphery really don't like austerity. It appears that German politicians don't even like the ECB. Plainly, the whole situation is very hazardous. The argument here is that growth can see us through and that it's in nobody's interests to ditch the euro. It's very, very sort of possible that we're at the end or on the doorstep of the end of austerity for some of these countries, and that is a significant step. And maybe more importantly, we have improving cyclical trends in employment. We have improving cyclical trends in terms of growth. You can look at the PMI data coming out of a lot of the peripheral economies, um, you can also look at, say, the retail sales numbers that came out of Spain recently, which were at record levels. We're starting to see some cyclical upswing. It's validated by QE, it's boosted by QE, it's helped by a weaker euro, and it's helped by oil prices having halved as well. So there are a lot of arguments that Europe has actually been through the worst of it over the last few years. Now's not the time for European countries to want to leave the euro area. So that leads to one critical question. Who exactly is going to benefit the most? I think, I think the, main, the main one, though, would be autos, where we've also got the track record in Japan from the two QE programs. You know, autos was one of, two, one, of three, sorry, one of three sectors in Japan which outperformed in both QE programs. It's been pretty strong in the last couple of months, but we think it is a sector to still stay overweight through the rest of this year and into next year. Now, in case you haven't missed it, the bottom line remains buy European equities because you're being given almost no choice not to. I think this is one of the most important debates across all financial markets. Um, you know, the, the yield gap, the reverse yield gap we have now between equities, uh, we look at the dividend yield and hmm. triple B yields or 10-year bond yields, it's historically wide. So you know, I, I can sit here today after five, six, seven years of equities going up, share prices going up, and I can say with a straight face, and because I've published research on it, that equities have never been cheaper relative to credit or relative to government bond yields. And what equities have, have become is the default yield asset class. So that becomes incrementally attractive to marginal buyers, especially those which have funding from the bond market, whether it's credit investors, corporates coming across. So the asset class offers this yield pickup, providing there is a growth put providing coupons in aggregate are paid. And if QE delivers improving nominal GDP and improving earnings, then it's very likely that those dividends are paid. Now, perhaps the clearest industries to buy on that yield basis are telecoms and insurance. But more broadly, the case does look stronger than you might think. 
European equities are cheap. There's decent evidence that the uh, uh, economy is now on the floor and we know what happens to stock markets when central banks resort to QE. Overall, you still definitely need to hedge the currency, but you can easily see why people are beginning to get excited about European stocks.